The forest-dwelling wood frog can be found as far south as Georgia and as far north as Alaska. And the ones living in those colder climates have a really cool trick for surviving winter's harsh temperatures. Their blood contains an antifreeze of salt that allows their body, the skin, blood and muscles to freeze and thaw safely when the temperatures rise. Unlike bears, this is not a winter-long hibernation. The freeze and thaw process may occur several times throughout the year, during which the frog burrows into covered leaves on the forest floor. Their noses don't actually glow red, but reindeer do have a different colorful facial feature. Their eyeballs turn blue in the winter to capture more light during the dark arctic winter month. In the spring, the eyes are golden in color. Reindeer eyes have a reflective layer behind the retina, which is on the back of the eyeball and contains light-sensitive cells. The color of the light reflected by reindeer eyes is related to the spacing of collagen fibers in the reflective layer. Reindeer apparently increases pressure inside the eyeball during the winter to compress these fibers together and reduce the spacing between these fibers makes the eyes reflect bluer light. No one has ever seen anything like this in a mammal before, let alone such a large shift said neuroscientist Glenn Jeffrey, who investigates vision at University College London. Like all baleen whales, humpback whales feed by engulfing a large volume of water containing prey and separating food and water using sieve-like baleen plates. However, humpback whales engage in a complex method of herding and eating prey, such as krill or Pacific herring, called bubble net feeding that distinguishes them from other whales. This dinner dance involves a pot of whales diving down below a school of fish and swimming in a circle around the prey, sending columns of air bubbles upward from their blowholes as they swim. This momentum forces the prey into the center of the circle and upward toward the surface. Then suddenly, the whales burst out of the water with their mouth wide open to gulp down their meal. This behavior occurs in the summer months, as they normally don't eat when migrating or breeding. A starfish eats its food outside of its body and then brings it inside. These sea stars feed by extending their stomach out of their mouth and over the prey. The prey tissue is particularly digested externally before the soap-like chowder produced is drawn in according to a study published in the Journal of Experimental Biology. Researchers found that the starfish can do this because of a molecule which carries signals between neurons, which in turn cause the stomach to expand and retract. A Mediterranean sea-dwelling tiny species of jellyfish known as Taritopsis nutricula has a reset button of salt. When the creature is harmed, threatened or starving, it reverts its cells back to their earliest form, basically turning itself back into a baby, or in this case a polyp. It then grows anew, leading scientists to call the jellyfish immortal. The jellyfish can die, however, this super skill develops only after the creature has reached sexual maturation, so they can die from disease prior to that or they may be eaten by a predator. The American Museum of Natural History explains the scientific process, the cellular mechanism behind it, a rare process known as transdifferentiation is when an adult cell, one that is specialized for a particular tissue, can become an entirely different type of specialized cell. Opossums have a serum protein in their blood that neutralizes snake venom, meaning that bites from poisonous snakes have no effect on the marsupials. Other mammals, including squirrels and honey badgers, are also immune to venom. Scientists are studying the protein to see if it could help human snake bite victims in the future. The World Health Organization estimates that at least 94,000 people worldwide die each year from venomous snakes. The mice that were given the venom incubated with the peptide never showed any signs of being sick, said Claire Comives, a professor of chemical engineering at San Jose State University in California. However, snake venom contains hundreds of different toxins, and the opossum protein may not deactivate all of them, so more research is needed. The red bits of fluid in this close-up photo of a hippo's skin may be red, but they are not blood, they are more likely bits of sweat. Hippos produce a natural sunscreen and coolant, and the reddish pigment is what gives hippos that rosy color you sometimes see. A 24 study showed that the sweat is made up of a red pigment and an orange pigment. The red contains an antibiotic, while the orange absorbs the sun's rays. The fluid comes out clear but turns color within a few minutes. It's a critical defense against the strong sun and searing heat in their native Central Africa. 
These slithery, slimy ocean floor dwelling creatures have two cool, though somewhat gross super abilities. First, when some species of sea cucumbers are threatened, they quite literally spill their guts. They defend themselves by expelling their internal organs out one end of their body. Their insides are sticky and are meant to trap the attacker, and the sea cucumber can regenerate the organs quickly. Second, sea cucumbers have a compound in their tissue called collagen, which can change under neurological control from liquid form to solid form and back again. This ability allows sea cucumbers to, in effect, liquefy their bodies and pour themselves into a crack in a rock, then wedge themselves in by solidifying their tissue to prevent a predator from pulling them out. The strongest animal in the world is not a bear, gorilla or even an ox. That owner goes to the beetle, particularly the dung beetle, which can pull more than 1140 times its own body weight, according to a 2010 study. That would be the equivalent of an average adult lifting roughly 200,000 pounds. Their incredible feats of strength are directly connected to their sex lives. Female beetles of these species dig tunnels under a dung pad, where males mate with them. If a male enters a tunnel that is already occupied by a rival, they fight by locking horns and try to push each other out, study author Robert Nell of the School of Biological and Chemical Sciences at Queen Mary University of London told Scientific American. When some species of salamander, like the axolotl, lose a limb to a hungry predator, they can regrow all of it – bone, blood vessels and muscles. They are not the only creatures who can do this. Two types of fish and zebrafish can as well. And a 2016 study on all three creatures found clues as to how this happens. Scientists found 10 tiny pieces of RNA that were the same in all three species. This supports an existing idea that the three master limb replacers last shared a common ancestor about 400 20 million years ago, and it suggests that the evolutionary process of growing limbs is saved over time, not developed independently in separate species. In case cockroaches weren't creepy enough with their predicted ability to survive an apocalypse and reputation for being unwelcome house guests, there is this. Cockroaches that are decapitated can survive for weeks without their heads. These pests don't breathe through their nose and mouth like humans. They breathe through spiracles or little holes all over their body, so they can breathe without a head. They don't have blood vessels or bleed like humans either, so blood loss wouldn't kill them. But without their heads, they couldn't drink water, so dehydration would finish them off before hunger, as they can go for weeks without eating after just one meal. You have probably heard of hermaphrodites, an organism that has both male and female reproductive organs. In some hermaphrodites, the animal starts out as one sex and switches to the other later in its life. Clownfish, yes, like Nemo from Finding Nemo, may be born male, but switch to female later in life. As the University of California Museum of Paleontology explains, this species lives within sea animals in groups of two large fish and many small fish. The two large fish are the only sexually mature fish and are a male and female breeding pair. All of the smaller fish are male. If the large breeding female is removed, her male mate changes sex to female, and the next large fish in the group rapidly increases in size and takes over the role as the sexually mature male.